Took my brave pills. I'm trying to drill this hole. April's helping. Thank you, April. You happy with her angle there? Um, yep. Okay. I'm sighting along this angle finder. And I'm sighting this way along, kind of using this point up here and using the, the stool itself. Try to get her close. I guess epoxy makes the rest of the way up. what that looks like. We got our hole made. Yep, it's excellent. And uh, this is my replacement spindle piece and the original leg. And we're just going to dry fit her here a little bit. We have to be a little bit not forgiving <laughs> to make these go in two joints at once, kind of. It should fit kind of like that. And if the feller had a measuring tape, we would start to see five and a quarter, five and yeah, half maybe. I don't know where I'm measuring from. Five and three eighths, five and three eighths, almost a half very close much much closer than it was before so i'm going to be happy with that we're tidying up work to go before we glue but that's major progress major progress we'll be back gentlemen welcome back to the shop today is the day and uh, we're going to try to epoxy the antique piano stool back together. Got some epoxy, a specialized mixing tray. Got my component bits. And I've taken each of these pieces, a nice rough piece of sandpaper, and, and gave it a twist this way. Just to put some sort of lines as texture to grip the joint a little bit. The holes in the body of this thing are all kind of rough and gnarly anyway, so they should be a, a pretty good gripping surface. Um, so by the, the power vested in me by Power Fist, we're going to get her did one way or another. This is the replacement spindle. She's got, you know, roughly stained. I don't have a lot of different stains to play with and, a, and zero experience, so the match isn't great but from a distance no one will notice and that's just, you know we just want to get away with it and not be awesome <laughs> we want it to be strong not mint uh, so I have to glue, uh, glue this in here first first step blam uh, and then we're just gonna goob some of this in here and in here and give her what for and hope for the best so uh, shall we commence we shall this has been sitting upright for quite some time uh, for air bubbles. So you're supposed to get the air bubbles out before you mix it, even though they cover it so you can't see. But there we go. Beautiful. There's no air bubbles down through the body of it. So put the condom back on there. Let's uh, let's go. Always, there we go, always one side, worse than the other. What the frag is this? I don't know what that is. We're just going to juice about half a tube in there. A bunch, a bunch, a metric bunch. And we'll pull that back to make some airspace. And we'll just ram this on. So that's technically kind of saved for the future. Since it's five minute epoxy, we're going to try not to dilly dally. Let's put a mix into her here. That should be pretty good. And we know that the pointing out end goes out to the leg. Mm. 
Might have to mix more, but that's okay. I'm going to make sure she's boobed up in there pretty good. A little bit on the, just on the tip here, just the tip and only for a minute. I don't want it to be so full that it like hydraulic hydraulically blocks the joint from bottoming out. So this end goes out, correct. And we'll just ream that in there. Give her a, a cruel twist of fate. And that's good. That's setting. The joint is close enough to tolerances that it shouldn't shouldn't be a problem like being off center too much and while that sets up I'll work on the other other leg I, I think so we'll do a little bit of this up in here yeah that's why I put tape on there We're running out of her that's good Really know how long five minute epoxy plays nice. I don't use it much. Use a little bit. But I've never timed it out. So there's good contact in there. And we'll hit these as well. What's this? Oh, that's that one. Oh well. Alright, so we'll do that one first. <laughs> that's why I take notes. Number two is number two. All right, well, there's mistake number one. If it doesn't get any worse than that, we're laughing. So we'll goo this up. And it can settle in place while this other side also settles in place, I guess. And then we'll work on the second. Second half of her. watching glue dry. Okay, now I'm going to re ass this thing with the quickness. Godspeed everybody. Okay. So we're trying to line her in here about yay somewhere. Right, it's not bad. I wish I had Thought to bring something to reference that fitment with better, but all right, keep at it. Do t'other one. And uh, hopefully this works. So this is uh, this still belongs to oh mess. Mess, mess, mess. This still belongs to the Highland Village of uh, Highland Village Museum of Cape Breton. And uh, will actually be used in their live performance, like music performances. So, trying to make her half halfway sturdy here, if we can. Which is why they entrust me with it, because it's meant to be actually used and not a, an actual museum piece. Right? Oh, that's starting to stiffen up. Well, we're learning how long five long five minute epoxy takes, I guess. Okay. This is kind of a uh, abusive process. Now, pardon me. I have to get off of camera here. To set this down onto a chosen piece of the floor. Uh is kind of mostly half level so that I can even out the uppy downiness of that. It's technical uh, furniture repair terminology by the way. <coughs> kind of uh, checking it for rock there and I had to squish these in just a little bit extra. That's cool. I'm just gonna do this to keep it from moving on me.
kind of just needs to be in that sort of zone. That's good. That's really good. Just kind of sits there. It's not wobbly, weebly, wobbly. And uh, at one point, I, I don't know if I did video on this part. I'm not sure I did any video of this, but the this crack repair that's long before my time, um, I just sort of chiseled into the top of it a little bit, and oozed some epoxy down into those as well. And uh, just to help sturdy that up, but very happy with that if it holds. Godspeed, everybody. All right, I didn't film any of this because it was just kind of quick and dirty work. I took this little basal platen, a cast iron basal platen, off of the seat, um, de rusted it a little bit, hit it with some black spray paint, cleaned up the hardware, and uh, kind of oiled. Rubbed a little oil on them so they shouldn't rust up too much. Uh, cleaned the threads a little bit. Rubbed just a touch of uh, axle grease on there, like a high, high stress grease, whatever, multi grease. Just a smidge. If it needs more, it can have more, but I want it to have a little bit there. But that's nice. The black is okay, and it'll keep that from being kind of like powdery with rust like it was before. Also rub just a touch of oil around on this collar up here, um, <clears throat> which used to be, I'm guessing probably like a nickel plate or something when it was new. But I'm not gonna take that all down. I just rub some oil into it so it wouldn't keep rusting. Well, there you go. As they say in the old world, the proof is in the seating. Nope, the pudding is in the job. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This thing's holding my girthy rear end up, and uh, I'm very pleased with that. It's not wobbly. The adjustment works. The, the uh, turn threaded section is super smooth. Smooth and nice. And uh, very good. So hopefully this will be back on stage in the performance space of the Highland Village Museum in Cape Breton. You know, next season when they open or this fall or whatever. And they'll use it in their performance space to make music and merriment and uh, bring joy to people. And I will be very proud to have some of my work uh, contribute to that. So, Godspeed, little stool. It's been 120 years probably. Here's to at least a couple more decades of use. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope uh, you've had as much fun with this project as I had because, you know, it wasn't any work for you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.